This is going to finish up Proverbs chapter number 2. And we're going to look at the subject, Hey, you're going the wrong way. Have you ever just seen someone going the wrong way? And you try to tell them, but yet they get mad at you. Sometimes you just got to tell them anyway. We're to warn people when they're going the wrong way. Proverbs 2.10 says, When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Okay, when you actually get wisdom in your heart, then you start to enjoy the Bible. And men enjoy the things of the world because they lack wisdom. When a man just, when all he cares about is worldly things, he lacks wisdom. But when you finally get in the Bible, like you should, the world will not satisfy you anymore because it's all so foolish and vain. But you know, you're going the wrong way when everything except the Bible is pleasant to your soul. Do you have hobbies that you would rather be doing than reading and studying your Bible? This may be a hard truth to swallow, but if you do, then the Bible is not the most pleasant thing for you. Is the Bible the most pleasant thing unto thy soul? When you wake up, is the first thing that pops into your mind God and His Word? Or is it breakfast, TV, video games, hunting, fishing? Is the Bible pleasant to your soul? After you have read and studied the Bible, do you feel satisfied as if you just ate the greatest meal that you ever had? Proverbs 2.11 says, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. If you have discretion, then you can evaluate the situations that present themselves to you every day. But today, people lack wisdom, knowledge, and discretion. This has put them on the wrong path. It's like when you see someone going down one way, a one-way street, and you look at them and scream, Hey, you're going the wrong way. And they can't hear you because their windows are up and their radio's blasted, so they just look at you funny. It's like that when you're trying to get a man to turn from the world to Jesus Christ. They're going the wrong way. And there, there is some ways mentioned in Proverbs chapter 2. And one of those ways is the way of the evil man. In Proverbs 2.12, it says to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. So the evil man is the Antichrist prophetically. In your life right now, he is the devil and men that serve the devil. And they're getting worse as time goes on. This goes against evolution, you see. Instead of getting better, things are getting worse. Men are getting worse. They're not getting better and better. 2 Timothy 3.13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. If you have the YouTube, if you got the YouTube app, Go, go to that trending section on YouTube. That will show you the result of evil men. The TikTok app will show you the result of daughters who are raised by evil men. Uh, abortionists, the transgender men who want to be called women, rioters, these types of people are evil men. They get worse and more perverted, more bloodthirsty. Their love has waxed cold because they are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, lovers of their own selves. They think their selfie is better than any painting in any museum. If they could clone themselves, they would just marry their clone. But evil men and seducers show acts worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, yourself could be one of these evil men. But they're headed down the way of the evil man. There are many people headed down the way of the evil man who love pleasure more than they love God. They fear men more than they fear God. And then another way that they're heading down is the ways of darkness. And there was these two guys I knew 
uh, growing up, and they turned their headlights off one night when they were driving in the dark, and they drove that way in the middle of the night, driving fast. Guess what happened? They wrecked the car. The car flipped, started catching on fire. They both died. They went the way of darkness. And that's what happens to you, spiritually speaking. You turn the lights off. You start driving fast. Boom, you're, you're going the ways of darkness. You're dead before you know it. Proverbs 2.13, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. That's Proverbs 2.13. Watch out for the 13s. Uh, when you're a kid, you may have horrible parents who corrupt your mind, and you may have, you may be in a bad environment, but there is still a time when you choose the path of uprightness or you choose the ways of darkness. Just because you have a bad upbringing doesn't necessarily determine for you the way you choose there comes a time when a man will reject Jesus Christ and choose the devil and money and worldly happiness and worldly wisdom. The way of darkness looks good on the outside many times. It might even look like the right path. But on that path, you find people who, verse 14, rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. There are people who are so far down the wrong path that they rejoice to do evil. It is one thing to do something that you shouldn't and then you feel ashamed afterward. We all do that. To the point that you don't want anyone to know about it. To the point that if you had the choice to die or let everyone find out, you would just go ahead and die. Because you don't want your testimony destroyed. That's one thing. It's a completely different thing to do the evil act and then put it on Facebook for everybody to see it. That shows you have drove down the wrong path about 100 miles per hour for a very long time. It shows you're not a, ashamed. What fruit have you in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Uh, people like darkness because they think they can get away with stuff in the dark. Not only do they rejoice to do evil, but they delight in the forwardness of the wicked. They love to see another person rebel and go against the ways of righteousness. You see these award shows where when a person wins an award for acting out sin, everyone rejoices. You see it in stand-up com comedy. You have a man standing up there blaspheming God, and then you have a crowd of men who delight in the filthy mouth of the comedian. Next, the Proverbs calls this a crooked way. Proverbs 2.15, whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. If you're not straight, you're crooked. You're living in a world where everything is crooked and backward. There are crooked people in every occupation, in every field, in every position. There isn't just crooked cops. People use a, well, they'll use a small percentage of crooked cops to say we should just get rid of cops. People will use a small percentage of crooked preachers to say Christianity is fake. Why would you want rid of cops? Because you're crooked yourself and you want to break the law. Why would you get rid of Christianity? Because you want to be your own final authority. You don't want to answer to God. You're crooked. Every path these kind of people take is the direct opposite of the narrow way, as Jesus calls it. They're crooked. They're on a crooked path. And next, what's another way they go? They go the way of death. 1 Timothy 5, 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. If all you think about is pleasure, then you're going the way of death. Proverbs 2, 16, To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. And doctrinally, prophetically, this is the strange woman of, of Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon. And notice she flattereth with her words. This is a, also a religious system that's going to use smooth words to deceive people. You'll notice all the fake TV preachers use smooth words to deceive people. 
all, all of them, all of the fake, mostly all the fake preachers will use flattery. Notice that flattery is not a good thing. You have to watch out for somebody who is always going around trying to flatter you. The strange woman would be a woman outside of their land, someone who didn't know the Lord God. And if you're a Christian, then lost women are strange women to you. A whorish woman is a strange woman to you. They try to flatter you with their words, their smile, their lips, their eyelids. Uh, the hold of a woman can be so strong that a man has to has to have the Holy Spirit of God in him to be delivered from her. Did you notice that almost all these tough Bible characters was somewhat defeated by a woman? Adam, he gave in and ate the fruit because of Eve. Solomon loved many strange women. David was a sucker for women. Got with Bathsheba. Samson loved the women. Ahab was all about Jezebel. You know, the women, you have to have something. You have to have the Holy Spirit of God in you to be delivered many times from them. And this Proverbs here is delivering you, is telling you, you need how to be delivered from the strange woman. You're going to have to have wisdom, knowledge, and discretion. And you get that by reading and studying the Bible and especially these Proverbs. Now, let's see about this strange woman here in Proverbs 2.17. And we'll talk about her more in the later chapters, but we'll just cover what it says about her here. Proverbs 2.17, which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. So she forsakes the God of her youth, her parents, and even God. She forgets any agreement with God that her parents may have passed on to her. Now look at this. Proverbs 2.18, her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. So that if you go her way, if you go to this wicked woman's house, if you get around her, that's the ways of death. A whorish woman will leave a married man with a busted up family, depressed, STDs, and everything else. Her house is pointed the direction of death. She may look very good on the outside, but on the inside, if you could see her, she would look like something off of a horror movie. She would look like Freddy Krueger on the inside. She would look like the Crypt Keeper on the inside. Growing up, there was this movie where I watched, which I don't recommend it. I watched a lot of bad movies growing up before I got saved, but the guy had the ability to see... Uh, people for how they were on the inside instead of how they looked on the outside so if many times if he saw a pretty woman when he got this ability to see how they were on the inside she would just be hideous so if you could actually see what these women look like even though they look good on the outside you'll find out that they're very hideous and when you join flesh when you go to bed with a with a a whore, you join flesh with her, and you're swapping spirits with her. The demons that's on her can get on you. So you need to watch out for that kind of thing. You need to watch out for the strange woman. Notice it says in Proverbs 2.19, None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. Have you ever heard someone point to a haunted house or something and say, or some scary place and say, no one has ever made it out alive. That is what the whorish woman is like. You may go to her house, but you don't come back like you went in, if you come out at all. Many times on a movie or a story or something, you have a, a scary-looking house with a scary-looking witch that lives in it, and all the kids are scared to go trick-or-treat at that house. Um, that's true. That stuff's true, except... It may be a nice house, and the lady may not look like a witch. She may look really good to deceive you because the devil appears as an angel of light, not just as a scary-looking witch. But it says, None that go unto her return again, 
neither take they hold of the paths of life. So once you go there, it doesn't mean you can't come back. If you choose to come back, the Lord will give you the option to choose. You could take hold of the paths of life. Because Jesus forgives for anything. He'll forgive you past, present, and future sins. You just got to take hold of the paths of life. You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel. And if you're already saved, you just need to confess your sins. And if you do, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you do that, and, and Proverbs 2.20 says, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. The best way to clean your life up is to forsake the way of the evil man, the ways of darkness, the crooked way, the, in the way of death so that you can walk in the way of good men and I've seen a lot of people who are trying to do better but they won't quit hanging out with the people who are doing the things that they're trying to stop doing Proverbs two twenty one and 22 for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it you see the wicked is going to be cut off from the earth. The Antichrist, the false prophet, Mystery Babylon, the great whore, Mystery Babylon. These characters that's illustrated in this chapter, that's yet future, are going to be cut off. Uh, God's even going to have the unclean spirits depart out of the land. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're going to see the wicked rooted out of the earth. As it says there in Proverbs 2.22, But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. But the upright and the perfect, they're going to dwell in that millennial kingdom. They're going to be in that land where the Lord is reigning on a throne in Jerusalem. But that rooting out is undoubtedly done at the second coming. You can pair this with Malachi 4.1, for it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the, the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So in this chapter, you've seen things about that you're going to see in the tribulation, the second coming, the millennium. But you've seen things that can apply to you today can apply to every Christian today. The Bible is an amazing book, and it's written in such a way that any man from any age can pick it up and get something out of it just for him. But are you going the wrong way? Proverbs would tell you how to get back on the right path, the path of righteousness, the way of life. So forsake all these wrong ways that you're going turn to the lord jesus christ it's just as simple as that if you're already saved come to jesus christ confess your sin as it says in first john if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if you're not saved then realize you're a sinner realize you're going the way of death turn to jesus christ Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which you also received, till that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. He died by shedding his blood. He was buried and resurrected. Now all you have to do is put your trust on him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you're not saved by living right. You're saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope you'll do that before it's too late.